how's it going? It's Vasco from the Angular University. In this lesson we are going to set up the Angular 2 router and we are going to avoid a couple of huge pitfalls from the beginning to give you an optimal Angular 2 router learning experience. We're going to set up routing debugging information from the beginning as well. It's coming right up. When setting up the router, the first thing that you want to define is your base path. You can do that using the HTML5 base HTML tag and you should point it to the entry point of your application. So in this case, we are pointing to this particular folder. Most of the cases you will have a base of slash, meaning it's the entry point of the server. When configuring the router, what we are doing is, depending on how the URL changes, certain sections of the page will display a certain content. We call those sections outlets. We are going to define here the primary outlet of the Angular 2 router. This means that in this section of the page, the content of this tag will be replaced by a certain component depending on the state of the URL. Which sections of the page correspond to which URLs? That's where the router configuration comes in. Let's set up our router configuration. So it's just an array of route objects and each one must define a path. So in this case, we want a certain component to display when we navigate to home. And we are going to display the home component. In order to make the router work, we need to configure the Angular 2 dependency injection system with the routing injectables. So for that, we use provide router and we pass it in the router configuration that we just created. If we now try to access the root URL of our application, we're going to get an error, but this is normal because we only configure the path to home, not a path to the root folder. So we would think that if we add home to the URL and we hit refresh to reload the application, that this would work, but we get a different error. We get a 404 not found from the server. This is a very common situation for someone just starting with the router. And it's the main pitfall that we mentioned in the beginning of this lesson, how to fix this and what's going on exactly here. So what's going on is that when we modify the URL and we hit enter, we are actually triggering a full page reload from the server. So we are not modifying the URL using the history API. When we modify the URL manually and we hit enter, this is going to trigger a request to the server to lower the file named home without an extension. This file does not exist, so we get back a 404. To avoid this problem, what we need to do is to configure our server so that any unmatched request will return the index.html file that contains our single page application. So slash home should return us as the HTTP response, the index.html file. Then Angular will bootstrap itself, the router will kick in, inspect the URL and take us to the home path. Let's apply this logic to our concrete case of our Node.js Express server. So we simply need to create an Express middleware that redirects us to the index.html file if the request was not matched by any of the previous routes that we configured. We will see in a second a better way of doing this, but let's try this out. So if we type in here an unmatched path, we get redirected to index.html and this file contains our single page application. Our application kicks in and Angular takes over from there. But this situation is not ideal because we created a redirect. There's a better way which is to configure the server to do instead of a redirect to return directly the index.html file. So if we do that in Express using response.send file, we are going to get back directly index.html, which is our single page application. Angular 2 kicks in, the router kicks in and notices I should be displaying slash home. So it's going to look up the router configuration to see which component corresponds to slash home. And it's going to display the home component. I really advise you to configure your server this way from the beginning in order to get a good development experience with the router. Otherwise, you will just get 404 all the time. Now, one last trick, which is we can enable debug information in the router. We do that via the 
Enable Tracing property. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you can always subscribe to my channel for more upcoming Angular 2 tutorials. Also, have a look at the website of the Angular University to see what type of Angular 2 tutorials you find there that you might like. And with this, you are all set up to further explore the router. We are going to explore child routes, auxiliary routes, and we are going to explain why does that contribute for a much better user experience and allows to more easily build much more modern and dynamic applications. So let's continue our deep dive in the router. Next up, router navigation.